Hey, it's Michelle, your CSC Biology Tutor, and I'd like to welcome you to the new series, Know the Differences. So in this series, I'll be looking at important terms that you really need to understand and be able to differentiate between. So to kick off this series, I'll be focusing on cell transport processes, diffusion, osmosis, and active transport. So these three processes, you really need to be able to differentiate between them. So diffusion and osmosis are examples of passive transport. That means that the molecules do not require energy to move. Now with active transport, you definitely need energy. So we're going to go into more details on each of these cell transport processes as we go on. All right, let's look at diffusion. Diffusion is the movement of molecules, which are solutes or particles, from a region of high concentration to a region of lower concentration. So as you can see in the diagram here, we're looking at the diffusion of solutes in a beaker of water. So solutes are substances that can dissolve in water, and what should come to mind would be sugars and salts. Those are the most common solutes that you can think of. So in this case here, say that the red molecules represented sugar molecules. So this represents a region of high concentration. And these sugar molecules are going to start to spread out to the water around it where there is a lower concentration, where there's no sugar molecules at all. So eventually these sugar molecules are just going to spread out and fill up the whole water until you get pretty much a solution of sugar water, a sugar water solution. So key things you need to note about diffusion. The process does not require energy to move molecules. So I would have stated that first of all. So it's a passive process. And diffusion occurs in both gases and liquids. So it can occur in the air. So for instance, if I spray a perfume in one corner of the room, eventually the, those perfume molecules are going to spread out and fill the entire room. And they also occur in liquids, like I just explained. And another thing you need to know about diffusion is that the process does not necessarily require a semi-permeable membrane to occur. Although it commonly would require a semi-permeable membrane in our body in terms of the cells because cells have in a semi-permeable membrane which is the cell membrane. So most of these processes that occur in the body will be happening across a semi-permeable membrane but it is not absolutely necessary for diffusion to occur in general. So I just gave an example of molecules dissolving, diffusing in a, in a liquid. There is no semi-permeable membrane involved in that process. So always remember, yes, often it would occur across the semi-permeable membrane in our cells, but generally speaking, diffusion does not absolutely need a semi-permeable membrane in order for it to occur. And then finally, diffusion would occur faster as temperature increases. So just imagine you're increasing the temperature, the molecules are going to be getting more active and colliding more frequently. So that is going to increase the process, the, the, the length of time, speed up the length of time that is going to take for these molecules to pretty much spread out. So the higher the temperature, usually the faster the molecules are going to move around and the faster diffusion is going to occur. So let's look at some examples of diffusion. So we have oxygen and carbon dioxide entering and leaving the lungs. So that's necessary for our respiration. And then we have secondly, nutrients moving across the small intestines into the blood. That's through absorption. And then thirdly, nutrients and waste materials moving across the placenta in a pregnant mother's womb. So nutrients need to be taken to the baby well, the baby, when it releases its waste materials, those materials are going to go into the mother's blood. So there's an exchange of materials. So all three of these processes occur through diffusion. All right, so we got diffusion down pat. Let's move on to look at osmosis. So osmosis is the movement of water molecules only from a dilute solution. So that's an area where there are more water molecules to a concentrated solution, an area where there are less water molecules. So think of osmosis as a special type of diffusion, but is only concerned with the movement of water molecules. So as you can see in this diagram here, we have a concentrated sugar solution on the 
left hand side and a dilute sugar solution on the right. So the water molecules are the blue circles and the sugar molecules are the red circles. And we have this semi-permeable membrane in between. So that's a key thing to note about osmosis. It requires a semi-permeable membrane. So no energy is needed to move the molecules. It requires a semi-permeable membrane to occur. And similar to like diffusion, it would occur faster as temperature increases. So as I said, osmosis is a special type of diffusion, but it only involves water molecules. So at the end of this little experiment you're seeing here that we have set up in this diagram, the water molecules are going to move from the dilute sugar solution, pass across the semi-permeable membrane, and eventually end up in the concentrated sugar solution. So the water molecules are small enough to pass through, sugar molecules too big to pass through. So eventually, the side that had in the dilute sugar solution, pretty much where there were more water molecules to begin with, that is going to decrease. So you always go from a region where there is more water molecules to where there is less. So the water is going to come and fill up the left hand side and make the concentrated sugar solution a little more diluted. So that is osmosis. So you're going from an area where there is more water to where there is less water across a semi-permeable membrane. So let's look at some examples of the osmosis. So water from the soil entering plant roots. That's how plants need to get their water. Water moving across the walls of nephrons in the kidneys. So remember the kidneys are responsible for filtering the blood. So the amount of water that would pass into our urine, that depends on how much water would move across the walls of the nephrons of the kidneys. And then thirdly, the water moving across the small intestines into the blood. So water, like other nutrients, would move across the small intestines and get into the blood, which would transport these the nutrients to all the cells of the body. So these are three common examples of osmosis. So let's move on to look at the final process, active transport. So this is the one now which energy is required. And you're going to see some differences right away. The movement of molecules from a region of low concentration to a region of high concentration. So right here you can see some things a little odd there. The molecules are not going from high to low, but instead they're going from low to high. So right away you can see that that's the difference between active transport and the other two processes that we just looked at. So what you need to know about active transport, the process requires energy released from ATP. ATP is that storage molecule, so it stores the energy and releases it when it is needed. So active transport requires that energy in order to allow the substances, the molecules, to move from a region of low concentration to a region of high concentration. So you're pretty much going against the concentration gradient. In the diffusion and osmosis, you were going down the concentration gradient. So you were going from high to low, high to low, high to low. But with active transport, you're going from low to high. So it's moving against the concentration gradient. So in active transport, it also requires a semi-permeable membrane in order for it to occur. Because they normally would occur across the cells in our body. So let's look at some examples of active transport. So sodium and potassium ions moving across the cell membrane of neurons and muscle cells. So neurons are nerve cells and you can see how these sodium and potassium ions move across these special protein carriers which are going to pretty much pump the ions against the concentration gradient. So where there is less sodium, you're going to have it going opposite. You're going to have the low amount of sodium going across the cell membrane to where there is more sodium molecules and then the opposite would occur with the potassium. So secondly, glucose is also actively transported from the small intestines and enters the blood through absorption and then thirdly, minerals from soil entering plant roots. So unlike osmosis where you have the water which is a lot in the soil going into the plant roots is a little different with the minerals. The minerals are actively transported from the soil into the plant roots because there are actually supposed to be less minerals in the soil as opposed to the mineral content in the plant roots. Alright, so now that we've covered all three, hopefully you know the differences now. 
So diffusion and osmosis, two forms of passive transport, no energy needed. And active transport, that is the one that needs energy because it is moving substances against the concentration gradient. So hopefully you really understand these differences between these three terms. <laughs>